Well, 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 look at that. I think we are live just two minutes after noon. Anyway, great to be doing this live. We've been wanting to do this session uh, for the longest time. And here we are today going to discuss using Meyer Space Map Go with SPAT Revolution and for various, you know, um, use cases. And we'll cover that right now. So without further to say here, I guess we could jump on our conversation of the day. <clears throat> so let's dive on our subject and thanks for joining again. Okay, here we are. So SPAT revolution and space map go. What are we talking about? Let's start with this conversation. For some of you that are not familiar with space map go, it is a spatial sound design tool from my folks at Meyer Sound. It is kind of the you know the continuity of some of the old LCS systems, Dimitri uh, Dimitri system, and you know since a few years now I've been released as space map go. Uh, and we'll discuss about that. No secret, our friends at Meyer have been deeply involved in theatrical production and deploying extremely large system. Um, so that is what Space Map Go is all about at the base. It is based on, app on an iOS application and specifically an iPad. So, you know, you're looking at basically deploying one or actually, for that matter of fact, multiple iPads uh, to become the control station, the spatial audio control station, sound design station for the system. Now, you know, ultimately, the, the iPad doesn't output any audio and there is a need for a processing device behind it. And this is where a key part of the component, which is the Meyer Sound Galaxy platform. Now, what we're going to be discussing today is how to use SPAT Revolution with Space Map Go without the physical Galaxy network platform. But the old concept behind Space Map is to leverage that processing power that these devices have. It is network based. You can expand to extremely large system for that matter of fact. And we're not going to discuss deeply, you know, the Meyer ecosystem. It's not the goal of today, but we'll kind of touch a few subjects and take questions as we go along. Now, native integration to SPAT Revolution to do what? To oralize, to monitor your space map session. One of the, let's call it challenge or reality with space map <clears throat> Go uh, is that it gets used in what we call a virtual mode at the beginning uh, without the actual physical device. You can start prepare, but then Although you are in virtual mode, there's no audio, virtual audio processing per se. And this is where, you know, SPAT come into the equation in order to actually be able to oralize. Binaural audio, definitely one of the, the option. We'll be sending some audio down or actually to a small, you know, scale studio system, for example, where you're prepping, you're preparing that file, that session in the case of, a, you know, a pre-production environment. Uh, <clears throat> And last but not least, well, it could, although it could, you know, SPAT Revolution and Space Map Go could be the great friends for the pre-production, for the actual content creation. Later down the line, even if there is a Galaxy system in venue, SPAT Revolution can still be used alongside to actually, for example, be streaming binaural audio, maybe recording binaural audio for a later streaming. So for these events, you know, where there's some in-venue and in-streaming or, you know, on, 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 on online content, for that matter of fact, or just purely for recording and archiving um, the soundscape, the, the, the sound design, this is where, you know, that, uh, that all integration shines. Um, so, yeah, if we go a bit deeper now on the space map, go deeper just to kind of talk about what's, what, are, what it is in a nutshell. We are talking about 2D spatial audio priming primarily. It is a 2D map where you're controlling the object. Now, yes, Meyer, you know, will mention the fact that you can, you know, have maps that are actually elevation maps and there's ways to crossfade from maps. A lot of power behind the engine and we won't dig into all the details, but at the base, this is what it is all about. It is about the 2D mapping on the actual map. Now, it supports at the base up to 32 sources, audio sources. It can do more than that on larger scale, but at the base, that's what the 
the space map application does. Uh, I call them sources, uh, you know, that's what we call them in SPAT Revolution. They are object, we're talking about object-based mixing. They are object, which are in space map go called channels, okay? So we're calling them channels, 32 channels, typically mono channels. They could be stereo channels, so linking two channels together. Um, to have them function as a pair, as a mirror pair, for example. And that is the concept of, of these channels, per se. And you'll see this in the UI if you're not familiar to it. Now, from a control perspective, uh, it provides, you know, uh, many options, but we'll be focusing kind of on three aspects. The control of this object, or this audio channel source, <laughs> the objects, let's call it objects for, for, for the moment being. So control of that object, live interaction with the object positioning. Uh, so great, you know, remote control to the system. L then the other aspect of control is the ability to create and manipulate trajectories, right? So create a circle, create whatever specific trajectory, stretch the time, stretch the, you know, between point. So complete control on what that object will do. So defining a trajectory, and that is the second part. And then ultimately, you are, you know, with the position control of these objects or the actual trajectory you've defined, you have the ability to use what you call mixed snapshot. So you're building a set list, you know, set number one, it recalls a position, and then at the same time, maybe object number eight starts an actual trajectory that you've predefined. Uh, and this is what we're talking here in the actual control aspect. Um, and yeah, the beautiful thing and what we'll talk about today is all this can be used to actually remote SPAT revolution. So remoting SPAT revolution will ultimately mean, yes, audio going through SPAT, you know, can be controlled, you know, can be remoted from the Space Map Go application as you are building or as you just, you know, simply want to control. Uh, no secret, yes, uh, you know, Space Map Go can be a great controller, you know, to learn Space Map and at the same time to obviously use with SPAT for trajectory control as there is no trajectory controls in SPAT Revolution as we currently stand. We have snapshot, snapshot system, but actual trajectory, Space Map is very powerful for that. Okay, SPAT Revolution, what are we talking about for the ones that are new on the conversation, maybe coming from the Meyer sound side of things. So SPAT Revolution is a standalone immersive object-based mixing tool. So it's a software, we call it a rendering software, software engine. It is an application cross-platform that takes this audio from pretty much anything as your core audio on the Mac OS front. And in real time, it receives metadata we call them, you know, we'll talk about OSC, Open Sound Control, to actually manipulate these objects. So this is what Space Map will do. They'll generate the metadata, the OSC data, and move the objects as simple as this. Um, there is two uh, things. We'll come back on this a bit later, you know, in, in SPAT Revolution. There's kind of two license model. We're not talking about this too much right now, but the essential license supports up to 32 audio objects and 16 outputs. That is the base. Great companion for, for Space Map Go. And then for larger deployments, you know, we have the ultimate version, which is ultimately limited by the audio interface. And it has way much more ca capacities. We have these room concept, multiple room. But the goal today is not to focus on that part but so those are the two spat revolution differentiator i'm going to be using the essential version today they look the same sessions are the same so anyway moving on so the support of smg my friend nicolas a hugo maybe refer what SMG stands for. SMG is Space Map Go. This is our internal or the word, the industry, <laughs> a three letter word to man to talk about the Space Map Go. Uh, so yeah, Space Map Go, OSC generic grabber via an input preset. So yes, we have an actual input preset in SPAT Revolution that is ready to take this these messages, which comes from their OSC generic grammar, which we'll configure today. Then what are we controlling? What are we receiving? Are we capable to receive? We're receiving channel position. So the 32 channel position, let's say on the start setup, we're receiving the name. This is great. You've done all your naming on your audio channels, objects. Whenever you activate, receiving the name, it handles the level, it handles the mute status. Maybe some audio are muted in a snapshot and a scene. And last but not least, the actual spread. Now spread, you know, is actually, you know, not used necessarily in binaural audio. Uh, it is mainly used in channel based system where we're basically distributing more signal on the arrangement um, so but this parameter is mapped uh, to which extent it will get used uh, you know that is uh, another another question now 
information that comes in, we are going to be in Spat Revolution scaling the scene. Why are we talking about scaling? Well, this is a reality with all immersive audio right now is everyone kind of has, is mapped, right? They're, are they normalized, you know, minus one, plus one? You know, on the data are using absolute value. At the base, Spat uses absolute value. And by absolute, I mean a real meter value, for example. And other will have their own map. And this is the case from Space Map Go. They have a 1,000 by 1,000 map. So we want to go on to be scaling them to say, What's 1,000, right? 1,000 is 10 meter, 20 meter, and we can change this on the fly, which we'll actually look at. Excellent. Well, we'll jump on the installing step. Maybe one little thing, and I should have actually mentioned this on the space map, Go Mac. Important to uh, you know have something very clear here, and which is the following: space map Go, and the word, the keyword there is map, is very powerful to actually create. A series of you know a, a, a arrangement you know a park and that's not necessarily the complete speaker arrangement, but can actually create part of an arrangement. Basically, you choose, you define the map, you define what we call the nodes, the elements of the map, and you're panning over these maps. Um, this is a concept proprietary to, to Meyer, and we're not trying to replicate this. So in SPAT Revolution and a space map, SPAT Revolution integration, we're talking strictly about you know, object position, trajectory, and not necessarily map definitions, right? And a map is what? The map is a speaker arrangement. Ultimately, we call them speaker arrangement. There is a, a, a big, uh, you know, dynamic in the industry in object-based mixing where we're, yeah, we're setting up all the loudspeakers and this is the arrangement we're panning over. Meyer comes from, obviously, they have that ability. All objects could be, or channels can be using the same map and that could be a surround sound system or whatever custom speaker arrangement. But the power of my space map is this ability to create custom maps per object. An object may be using these three nodes, speaker, pan points, whatever you want to call them, and do some equal power panning over it. So um, the dynamic is, yeah, important to separate that in your mind. If you're obviously looking to virtualize space maps, all the custom maps, you won't be able to do this with, uh, with Spat Revolution. What you'll be able to do, though, is virtualize your soundscape, agnostic of the reproduction system at that point, OK? Or the final decisions on what are the maps. Just wanted to make this sure this was clear. Install steps, and then we'll be jumping right into it. First step, install Space Map Go application. I do have my iPad here. We're going to be sharing with you. So installing that iOS application from the store. Quite simple to explain. Don't need to go through the steps, I believe. Install the Compass software. Compass is the software for the Galaxy, Galileo Galaxy platform. Um, and uh, so what, what we can do with this Compass software, and this is the concept of pre-production, you don't necessarily have the loudspeaker management, the galaxies in your rack next to you. Chances are you're on a plane or whatever. So the idea is you basically you know, install the software and you add a processor, and which is in virtual mode. Right? You add a processor in virtual mode, and now the actual processor is, you know, it pretends to be there if you want, and this is how we're going to get the space map go communication going. And this is the important thing: is there is an operation mode, and which we'll look at in two seconds, which basically makes the um, the uh, the compass uh, in virtual modes and act as a server. It basically acts as a server, uh, you know, to the space map session. That's what allows the communication. It's the center. So that application is running. I have it running in front of me with Spat Revolution. I'm doing all this from a single computer today. I've got my only external device uh, per se is that space map application. Okay. So ensuring the operating mode, and we'll look at this rapidly. Now the connection. How do we connect this? Well, granted, Meyer Space Map works great on Wi-Fi. It was thought for this, but if you're thinking about live performances, you know, live interaction, no one wants to be stuck with, oh, the connection is down or it's becoming sluggish or whatever reason may be. So the recommendation for reliability is actually to use a hard wire. I'm using here today a Ethernet PoE uh, injector. So it powers the iPad and provides Ethernet connection. So I've got a very solid connection. There's no Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is off both my computers here. So there's no, I'm not doing any Wi-Fi. Um, and important, the question came up um, with the user on a, on a Flux user group at one point is someone was saying, well, I'm in Wi-Fi, trajectories work perfect, but not live control. And that is simply that once you play the trajectory, 
the server is playing the trajectory, the compass and virtual mode is playing it. Where you, when you are actually live in the actual space map application, moving the object, well, then it's you're transmitting from that to the server, and then this is where the Wi-Fi it can become sluggish. Okay, so hardwire. I mean, I haven't looked at all the Meyer sound documentation on this, but I'm assuming that they, you know, recommend that most of the time going, you know, fully wire, uh, wired. But that may be fine for some pre-production. But yes, it doesn't mean there's tons of adapters available. Uh, this this one used, yeah, you know, lightning, lightning adapter, RJ45, you just put it online, they cost 20 bucks, 30 bucks, very easy. Okay, and then last but not least, configure your SPAT revolution session, we'll do this um, today for the ones that are new, you know, there'll be maybe a little bit of learning and we've got great resources for this. And what we'll need to do at the end, once we've got that session going, well, we'll actually set the communication port and actually dump the start sync because yes, as soon as the space map go, enables that communication. It actually dumps all the information, the names and everything, and SPAT is completely in sync with whatever was the start point of, uh, of the session. Okay, I think we are ready to move on, are we? Uh, I think we are ready, so let's dive. Let's dive into this. 15 minutes to get to the dive point, that's not too bad. Um, that's not too bad. And we're going to first start on this dive with going into our Compass software. So here we are. The Compass software is started. And what we actually see right now is we see an actual device. Let me just get this online for me here. Uh, to be good. So yeah, we are seeing an actual device. And if that processor is not there, you can actually add a processor uh, simply. And at this point, it's a processor that's going to become virtual. So it is already there in my case. The only thing that I need to do, there's kind of two steps. Number one, you're going to make it uh, you know, uh, in, in virtual mode. And actually, for the sake of the exercise, let me actually add as well a quick thing for you. Voila, let's, let's actually show the iPad iOS application. What you see running there is Space Map Go, and it's actually looking on the network. It hasn't seen any virtual devices. It's not connecting to anything. The iOS application doesn't do anything without it. That's important to understand. I'm going to go on the Compass and click the virtual mode. It'll take two, three seconds, and it's going to become virtual and be online. Go to yellow, and if everything goes well, it should appear on the, and it did on the actual space map s application. It's being discovered as a virtual space map, unconfigured. We haven't configured it yet. As simple as this. Actually, I can give you a bigger view for the ones who wants to see. That's what actually ends up happening, right? So the space map on the iOS application is seeing the system unconfigure, and we'll get into the steps later. Easy for this. One important thing to note, though, as you see the device here, Virtual Galaxy is there. It is important to have it in space map mode, operating mode. In normal mode, it will act as a loudspeaker management matrix and all the matrixing capability, but it won't act as a space map mode. So if you're not seeing the in the space map go application, the virtual devices, chances are that you are not on this operating mode. Okay, and that's it. That's really it. There's no Ethernet connection. Uh, you know, Meyer does a great job for all these connectivity. We have a local application here that's Compass that you can see. We can speak to it local. What's local? I mean, 127. Two, one, two, seven, zero, zero, one. It is uh, basically, uh, you know, <clears throat> A local address, you know, that uh, we use typically between application to communicate. But uh, yeah, so basically, Compass is exposed to all the Ethernet interface of our computer, being these, you know, these local interfaces or be any network interface you may have, Wi-Fi, wired, and so on, so forth. But there is no configuration, uh, most probably thanks to the IPv6 stuff they're doing and everything they do in the back. But it's really, really simple. There's nothing to think about. Okay. Good stuff. Let's get back that iOS uh, application on the bigger screen now, just so you guys see what's going on. And let's get this going. I'm going to click on that map and get it going. It asks me, is there physic, you know, is there physical input to configure, uh, such as you know, uh, you know, configuring the physical input of the device. Uh, we don't have a device today. We're just going to go for the no physical input mode, uh, which is typically for AVB audio uh, when we're working with these systems. It, pretend, it presents me how many inputs are in the system. I'm just going to actually keep going and go next, next, next. 
uh, and so on and so forth. I can at this point rename uh, the entity per se, but there's not more than that to do and just to save the system and here we are. And it's going to be configuring itself uh, and voila. So here we are. Now, do you want to physically connect the AVB audio? No, we're not going to be routing audio in Space Map or in Compass, for that matter of fact. All your audio for this pre-production or all the audio will be going directly to SPAT, and we'll see this in two seconds. So there's no audio. We can simply close this. And here we are. You're seeing you know, multiple pages, one, two, three, and four, four pages of you know eight, so 32 channels. There's a little overview page here. If I could see, yeah, we're not seeing anything because there's nothing yet. And here, what is being presented is the ability to choose the actual maps, okay? Because yes, an object needs to have a map, and that's the concept of Meyer space map. <laughs> um, so we're going to be doing this in two seconds. Before actually going too far, just maybe, you know, you can actually enjoy what's going on on the bottom, uh, left to right. There is, you know, what we call the mix section. So you're seeing eight channel of the time, and you can navigate 1 to 8, 9, 16, 17, 24, and so on and so forth. You've got a channel view, which hasn't been configured yet, but this is actually seeing one channel at the time. Trajectory and stuff. We'll get back to this. This is the set list. Third button is our set list. There's already some predefined one. I can drag left and delete them, and we'll be able to create new mix snapshots as we build this. Moving on, the ability to create maps. So let's talk about this one rapidly, about creating maps. And you know what? I'm going to do something with you, which I actually do all the time, is I create an AP map. Now, you can use any map that you want. As I said, it doesn't matter. The map has to do with the calculation of what goes to which speakers on the output of the galaxy. But this is not what we're doing here. So you can choose any map to work on. It doesn't matter. Uh, <clears throat> for me, sometime, I'm just going to create an empty map and call it, you know, and call it simply <laughs> empty. I'm going to call it empty, enter, and that's it. And I call this done. So now, why would I do this? Well, I would do this simply because if I scroll down the list, I actually have an empty map. So there's, we're not seeing any speakers. I'm kind of agnostic of the concept. You're not obliged to do this. Um, good, so we have that empty map. Last but not least will be the setting, and that's what we will configure in two seconds as we make the connection with SPAT. So just to finish the exploration, back to the main page, the MIC page, select a space map. You go there, and you can choose the actual map. We can go back to the bottom of our list, the beautiful pre-created list and choose the map that we want. Now, it's going to affect it to channel one. If we want to have all channels on the right, on the top, select additional channels. And we could say, I want to have the exact same map everywhere. Call it the day. Boom. So the map is there. You see now we have a button. If I go to the actual channel tab, right, mix channel on the bottom, I actually can move this object, no problem. And this is where I'll be able to choose a trajectory. Voila. Here we go, we are ready. We have an empty space map. It could be a specific one, but we're just going to use an empty for now. I'm ready to assign trajectory if I want. This is my main page. And we'll be ready to actually configure um, SPAT Revolution and the uh, last but not least, the connectivity. So let's actually jump right into this. So here we are in uh, SPAT Revolution, which is the software itself uh, running on Mac OS today. And uh, I'm going to be with you kind of looking at the configuration configuration of it. Uh, um, and there's basically two, two aspects. There'll be the audio portion, uh, which we could do together right now. And I'll keep this for later. We'll focus on control for the moment. Audio is quite straightforward. And then the actual communication, which we'll set. So to begin, I like to actually do something very simple and actually hit the Create Session button. If we go Create Session, it tells me what do you want to do. And, you know, we'll go simple today. We're going to say Create Me 32 Sources, Channel Based Mono. Uh, and I can call them channels, but it doesn't matter. The name is integrated. You'll see it. And then the room, which is basically us asking you what do you want, how do you want to be listening, monitoring this in. And uh, we're going to be choosing here for binaural audio because I want to be able to send you this audio. So we'll be creating right now binaural room, 32 sources, and we'll call it the day and press OK.
Excellent. There we are. We have a room here. That's our action. I just clicked in it. This is the environment where we'll be able to move objects. Uh, and we no longer really need to go to the setup page, you know, for, you know, you may want to rename the room in the setup and calling headphones. If you want to be, oops, what is this? Is that a French keyboard? Oh, look at that. I'm going to call it Ed because my keyboard is being a baby. Good. So, yes, you see it renamed the room here called Ed, you know, or Edphone. Maybe you have a studio setup, call it the speaker setup itself. The only thing that we're going to do together now is configure the ports to be ready for communication, and then we'll enable this in Space Map. So, let's hit the preference space on the top right. We hit this preference page, bunch of preferences which we won't focus. I'm actually going to focus on two aspects with you. Huh? This one was already configured, but we'll do it together. So on the hardware input, this is how you're going to be routing audio. As I said, I'll come back on playing audio later. In this particular case here, I'm actually going to be configure an audio bridge device. So 96 channel of audio bridge, Mac OS bridge. And to bring my audio, I'm going to be using QLab to play. On the output side, I'm actually using, and this Flux Audio Bridge, by the way, is based on Black Hole. It's a custom device that we made for 96 channel. Black Hole offers 64 channel, 32 or 16, and you know, a, a mix of, uh, of I.O. configuration. And on the output side, though, I actually am choosing a pure Black Hole 16 channel. And this is the one that I'm going to sending you to you guys. So from my streaming software, I'm going to be sending two of those channels back to you. So that's it. That's actually the only audio configuration there is to, set to do. I am at 96K, uh, and that's it. That's all. We're going to want to be then opening the port, the communication port, making sure the OSC is enabled on the right side, and we're going to be strictly choosing, I was mentioning input presets, the input space map go preset. And really, there is nothing to do. The only thing to remember, there's a port number. We'll need to remember this in two seconds. And because we are local, we don't even need to care about setting a network interface. We could, we would have to if we had separate machines and processes. But here, we don't need to change anything. We're pretty much ready to go. Uh, while we are here, though, Please take time to actually see this here, what we call transformation. This is the scaling I was mentioning. So from minus 1,000 to 1,000 dir map to a map of minus 10 plus 10 in spat revolution. So what is that? 10 meters, 10 meters. This is basically, so you know, plus 10, minus 10 is the map that we have. You can change this to smaller, bigger, just by changing these value and define the map that you want, as simple as this. And it will do this on the X, Y, well, it shows Z position. Nicola, there's no need to Z here. Anyway, we're not receiving any Z. There is no elevation. Back to what I said, space map is 2, the only at the base. So, um, but yeah, the transform was ready for that. Okay, that's it. We go back to this. Let's go back now to Space Map Go, and let's see what that does. We are in Space Map Go, yeah. And let's go configure it. So we're going to be hitting the setting page. So on the Space Map Go application, last tab bottom is actually the setting page. And there's various things, inputs and outputs. But what will be interesting to us today is the external actual general purpose OSC communication. So what we'll need to do there, we're strictly going to need to put a local address. Yeah, we need to define it in Space Map Go. Um, and we'll be defining the port number. And remember, the port number was what? 8,000. Could be whatever, but 8,000 is the default port. So that's Pat presented to us. If you're not in conflict with any other port, it's just a port. And voila. So it's configured, last but not least, to actually activate the Enable button. And when I do so, if I've done everything correctly, you see on the right and the left side, all the SPAT Revolution objects that were called Mono 1, 2, 3 are now called Channel 1, Channel 2, Channel 3, Channel 4, and we are ready to go, right? So right now we are in SPAT Revolution. We have communication. We'll be flowing audio in two seconds, and I'm going to be using the iOS pad to actually confirm that we have communication, but I already know because the channels or the sources all have been renamed to 32 channels because why well because they weren't named yet in our uh and the application um well we could even take the time rapidly to uh to actually change an input name if i change the first one and calling hugo 
Uh, you're not going to see this. Well, maybe you are seeing this. And I call it Hugo. What did I do? I went into the settings input and renamed the first one. And I see I just changed the name in space map go and space SMG, space map go. And the first object actually changed name. So yeah, we have good communication there. Everything is fine. Let's go back to the mix page. Let's touch an object. And indeed, we have this communication. And if we scroll out a bit, yes, the top corner left is what? Well, you know, back to that scaling conversation. Back to that scaling conversation. We are at minus 10, 10. So we at at the maximum position. Everything is working from the scaling perspective as well. And here we are. We can be starting to build. Let me, uh, let me get a bit uh, more, uh, more object scaling there so you actually see better. And we can zoom this. This is Hugo. We can move Hugo. You're not listening to Hugo right now, but you are listening to Hugo, but not that Hugo, <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> so we are positioning objects in Space Map Go. And maybe on the object six, we want to actually do a trajectory. And to do this, I'm gonna, I actually prefer to use the channel page or the second tab. In the channel page there, we can choose, okay, well, you know what? Let's spin Hugo. Let's not spin anything. So, you know, I am on channel Hugo. I, I still have control on the object, but now I have the ability to choose a trajectory. And maybe the trajectory is a simple circle, which I can choose, and then I go done. So the trajectory is now loaded, and I can press the play button, and it is working for us nice and smooth. I can decrease the rate, well, decrease the rate, go for a negative rate, you know, and choose, and so on and so forth. Scale the object. You can manipulate the actual object itself. So this is me zooming in, zooming out. Not being in the position tab, but on the trajectory pad, moving where the object is in space. So complete control, very, very powerful. Now, if we like this, we can make this a mix snapshot. Next tab over after channel, set list, capture a mix snapshot. We can call this test. Maybe I went fast on this, and that's it. And we have that mix snapshot. We'll make another one after playing, and you'll, I'll take a bit more time to show you the steps. All right, so if I go back in channel here, maybe I want to change the trajectory. Uh, I could change the trajectory for a simple line left to right. All right, so the object will now do something different. Uh, the line, oh, it's a side one. But anyway, I can actually zoom out. Manipulate that. Okay, so we have a simple line there. And maybe I want to actually do something else on other audio objects. All right, maybe on channel six, I want to create that position. All right, so I go on the selector, channel 15, I want to do this. All right, and so on and so forth. Let's say this is state number two of our show. We can go straight back to set list and actually create a second one. And go capture. Voila. Uh, so the capture is capture channel snapshot. This is the button right there on the right side of the interface. And from now on, I can play the first one. And I can play the second one. Ask me a confirmation to recall. I think you can defeat that option. But yeah, boom. And then we're moving from a state to state very simply. And we are building our set list. Voila. Voila, voila. I think that is, you know, fairly simple here. Uh, we'll take some questions as they come, you know, uh, later on. Well, you can start to ask your question just to get you going. So in review, right, a mix, the mix page, we are going to choose a map, a space map per se, but it can be a blank one like I'm doing, or it could be any of the space map. As I said, we don't take this into consideration. Uh, in the channel pages, typically where we choose an actual trajectory. If I go back to object one, right, you see that trajectory that's going. On the set list is where I've built the set list. Pretty straightforward. The actual create is to create those maps. And the last tab at the bottom, the settings, this is where we've configured. And as simply as putting 127.0.0 or whatever the SPAT computer is. And uh, the actual port, the 8000, which actually maps to here, the 8000 port. I could change this map, uh, this, this scaling if I wanted to. Don't need to do it. You have to trust me for it. Okay, goods. 
Good, good, good. I think we are good for that part. Let's go back on this slide quickly to move on the conversation. So the audio routing is the one that we wanted to talk about, obviously. So from the audio routing perspective, and let me show my face. It's always nicer. Hello. I am back. Um, so yes, from the audio routing perspective, you know, you can route your audio sources. QLab is a great example because you may be using QLab as a show control anyway. So you'll be preparing your audio in QLab, but you're gonna be using sending it to SPAT to actually, you know, uh, to actually render. Uh, but that would render, yeah, render process, get binaural audio results of what you're creating for mix. Then it could be a workstation, a, do a reaper, could be live sources. You could be in a studio setup like here in the back where you have a playback or some even live sources and you're preparing. It doesn't matter, but you'll be routing this to SPAT Revolution to begin with. Number two, we could do this on a single computer or on dual computer. In the case of single computer, I'm using either two options. Today, I'm using the bridge audio device, which I showed you was the Flux Audio Bridge, which is a black hole. Uh, Dolby Audio Bridge works. Pro Tools Audio Bridge. There's other audio bridge solutions out there. Fortunately, um, Windows friends, eh, not too many solutions on that front. Limited anyway. Um, and not too sure which one are reliable today, but we hope for a good future with our black hole friend maybe who could release uh, such a device to simplify routing from one to the other. The other option, again, this is a local one, and, uh, and it applies to actually the workstation, is our SPAT plugin, for the one that are not familiar with it, can extract audio. I'll probably put it in two seconds in the QLab session so you see it, that you can actually send audio to SPAT Revolution without any audio device. It's a local audio pad. We just engage this on the Q outputs of the DAW or on, uh, sorry, Q outputs of the Q lab, so up to 64. Um, or you can actually put this on your workstation as well, on the Pro Tools, on the Reaper to simplify audio routing. Um, so that would be uh, that would be one option. The second option is dual computer, and then well, here we are with Core Audio, Digiface, Dante, RME, Maddy, whatever I channel count audio device between both machines. This is all standard for us. And your audio output in this particular case will be going to your audio interface, right? You want to be monitoring this uh, on a studio system, on a headphone amplifier, or to both, for that matter of fact, um, or you know. Uh, Yes, and that was where it's begin, where it will begin. And then maybe later on, you're going to want to record. Maybe you want to be recording that creation for, you know, to sending to other people in the team or whomever you're working with. So you have obviously the ability to take the SPAT output and route it, but that's not the subject of the day. And yes, at the end, if we are in situ with a Galaxy system, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the SPAC computer to receive the same audio. So if you are in situ with the Galaxy system, whatever 32 audio channel AVB going, or Milan, uh, I should say, to be careful there, bad boy, the 32 channel going to the space map could be routed as well to SPAC Revolution using a, for example, RME AVB uh, Digiface interface. So both audio will run in parallel. Space map would be controlling the galaxy to do the in venue, but at the same time, the messages go into SPAT and that soundscape could be streamed addition. So that's great for a parallel in situ uh, rela uh, relationship with SPAT Revolution. Okay. Next, let's just go quick snapshot. I do recommend for people who are interested on the conversation of QLab to actually go to uh, one of our webinars. Uh, maybe uh, Nicolas, Arsène, or members of the team, maybe you guys can put the link. Uh, we had a QLab webinar that talked about all this integration because, yeah, that's another one on its own. So I recommend if you're planning to do this to go watch this one. It talks about all the abilities. Um, yeah, we've done this maybe a year ago. So yeah, but in a nutshell, this is what it is. Your network queue, you know, uh, would be sending network messages to SPAT Revolution, which is uh, the normal uh, use case. But then the audio queues, you'd be using the SPAT Revolution plugin to extract the audio and come in as software sources. In this particular case, we come in from QLab to SPAT, same computer, right? The creation laptop, for example, you know, from QLab, SPAT send plugin on the queue output and then software into SPAT hardware out to your audio interface. 
Just one thing, though, be very careful. You may be tempted to plug the 1.8 connector on your MacBook Pro to listen, and you won't get any result because there is a clocked reality there. You must be using an aggregate device in macOS with input and output in order to actually provide clock so SPAT can output to it. Little details, but maybe you have a portable audio interface as well, but for Mac OS people, watch for this one. If we're moving to two computer, well, basically that's what it is, right? Separating on two machine, a control network, and an audio over IP network. And if you're moving from one to the other, it's quite simple. Anyway, dig on the YouTube, on the other YouTube specific to QLab. I'm sure there's some users that don't really care about QLab necessarily, but QLab is a preferred environment environment for sound designer, no secret about this. Okay, good stuff. Well, maybe actually as we've talked about QLab and go, I mean, before to get into the advanced stuff, we can maybe just rapidly uh, go to QLab Air. Let's see what it does. Okay, so we have QLab. I have this little QLab session here just for fun. Um, just for fun, and as I said, I won't spend too much time on the audio routing. Uh, you know, I've got to bin some audio files there, and I've got a little message here, uh, which we're going to talk about in two seconds. So, um, yes, audio files, nothing really, you know, specific here. I've got an audio file, and this audio file is outputting where? Well, it's outputting on the Flux Audio Bridge, and this, what, this is what will allow me to send you signal. And let's actually test this right away. Uh, it's not working. No, because I did. Voila. Would be better if I muted the signal. How's the audio for this? It seems to be working. Good. Just one thing I wanted to say, though, important. When you open SPAT Revolution and you create a session, Actually, all audio objects are actually have reverb enabled. And now, someone in space map creation may not want to be using this. Uh, you know, sh quick shortcut cut here is Command A, and actually disable so it selects all sources and just killing the reverb engine. Ah, sorry, you're not seeing that screen. That would be better. <laughs> yes. So I've actually just selected in Spat Revolution all objects and actually disabled reverb engine because you'll see that makes a big difference if I play that thing again. I All right, closing the reverb engine there. Okay, good. So what we'll be obviously able to do is use those channel and patch them in QLab. This is not a QLab session, but yes, I could be obviously firing a bunch of things here, firing an helicopter. Right now, they're all going into the same uh, audio output. All right. And that's it. That's all what I can be firing uh, in other outputs if I wanted to. All right. And now we have another object uh, in SPAT Revolution. Object number two is actually playing, which I can be controlling. Obviously controlling it with space map. Why not? All right. And we go. Voila. So that gives you an actual quick, you know, kind of overview of what's going on. No digging di di uh, deeper in uh, in QLab. I'll just gonna before we finish this off, I'll show you two aspects. Um, so now we've, you know, kind of worked on. Okay, space map go create set list, send to spat revolution. Now someone may want to say. Yes, I don't care too much about Space Map Go for the moment as an application remote, but I want to be building my QLab session. So important to know that in QLab 5, there is a module for SPAT Revolution, but there's a module for, Q for Space Map as well. And we're going to see this in two seconds. So, right, so in Space Map, uh, in, uh, in uh, QLab, we have in a network queue, right, uh, command eight for a new message, is we have the ability to have a, to actually uh, patch these network messages to my space map directly, and then obviously maybe controlling a channel and controlling the level of a channel and so on and so forth. So all possible messages are there. Why do I say this? 
if you actually send this message to spat revolution it's actually going to do the same thing right it's going to spat is going to respond like if it was a galaxy system so you can build your q lab uh, session preparing for the sp the the spat you know the space map environment remaining in QLab with your audio queue and with your actual events. And we could trace this two seconds before we move on. We could say, you know, Meyer space map channel, you know, uh, channel, uh, yeah, on the channel uh, parameters, the position, object number one, and let's get a 2D map here and let's do this, okay? So we actually prepare this and if I send this message, is anything happening? No, nothing is happening. Let's see why. Uh, yeah, anyway, you know what? I'm going to be sending it to SPAT Revolution because that's what the most important part. So in these network ports and, you know, in space map, I'm just going to be sending the space map messages. But I'm going to be sending it to port 8000 which is again our spat revolution. And now, what we should see is I'm gonna get this going for uh, like 20 seconds, up, be sending this message, and let's go to spat. And, well, nothing is happening. Well, <laughs> not too sure what I have done wrong here, but it's supposed to be working. Anyway, no focus on this one for the moment, but uh, it should be working. <laughs> I'll review this later anyway. But yeah, so anyway, but that works. I was doing it earlier, but I guess it's the demo effect. So I can actually route these, uh, you know, these, um, these QLab messages straight to actually to SPAT Revolution, and SPAT will act the exact same way so you can be building the show. Um, okay, let's just go back quickly um, before I review this. Well, maybe as I am there, let me have a look there. Uh, 38, 8,000, yeah, general purpose. This is good, so that should be working. Anyway, I'll go back to the main uh, the main deck here just to talk about a few advanced things. And at the end, if guys have questions about this anyway, I can jump back and try to make it work. No problem. Okay, so advanced conversation. Well, yes, this is what we're talking about, building your QLab session for Space Map Go while interpreting the messages in SPAT. So, you know, whatever you're building, obviously the message we support, but at least the position is definitely a good one. Uh, you know, the position, the level, the mute, so of all your show. A and other advance, maybe to add the console integration. I haven't actually done it here, but behind me is an Avid S6L. If I use the Meyer space map, if I use the Meyer space map plugin behind me um, on the console, it actually speaks with the space map system, which speaks with the SPAT system. So I've got a complete integration. So if the goal was to build, you know, from the live console, Avid SXL, Digico, whomever supports the space map integration, well, you could still have this. So this can actually serve in a in a live pre-production uh, environment as well. So quite important uh, to discuss that. Voila, so I think in a nutshell, we've kind of covered, you know, what this is, object-oriented tool from SPAT Revolution. We have a reverb engine that we, in which we use to create a sense of depth, you know, reinforcing localization as well. What we've talked about, it was about, it was about virtualizing the production with binaural audio. And, you know, we can render with deliver, uh, various techniques, but this is kind of another subject. To ultimately do what? To bake your audio for a later playout. So, yes, Pat can actually prepare the content to actually be able to bake it and then play out on the system, you know, when it's actually living on a timeline later. Or, well, for that matter of fact, we bake audio for Dolby Atmos deliverable as well, at 712 or even larger formats uh, that we use on objects. And, uh, and well, ultimately, if it's not about baking, it's about deploying live, and, you know, this is, this is what we do as well in our world. Just to kind of wrap up, you right, two version, the 32 audio, single room binaural, or up to 16 speakers. 
Ambassador setup or even Ambassonic with the Essential and Ultimate. And uh, yes, for the people who are interested, uh, we have a very uh, flexible model. If you're working on a design for one month, which a bunch of Meyer Space Map, yeah, you can take a monthly subscription. And you can even call what we rent, well, it's an actual rent to own monthly. So you rent it, but if you rent it for long enough, you end up owning it. And we have various pricing model, you know, that works for all, uh, all these solutions. So yeah, thank you again for everything. Thanks for joining. It's been, uh, it's been an actual pleasure to be with you guys today. And see you next time for another beautiful webinar. And as I said, Flux Immersive user group on Facebook. You could join us now and we uh, will be able to actually answer questions or maybe get the community to help us with your answer, Rodrigue. So thank you. Do I have my answer from Bredzel? No, he is br I eat Bredzel. Well, I don't know. Maybe someone will help me figure this out. Thank you, everyone, and have a great end of day and see you in two weeks for another one of those. Cheers, cheers. Thank you.